Okay, well, good afternoon, and thank you for continuing to follow uh, the Artemis program and the Artemis One mission. We are on flight day 20 of our planned 26-day mission, and we continue to proceed along the planned mission profile. As uh, Sandra indicated earlier, we did successfully complete the return powered flyby and are now committed to an Earth return trajectory on, um, on the 11th. Um, as we've talked in the past, uh, we've had a, um, a number of commitments to each and every one of you, and one of those involved uh, what we call sharing remarkable images. And if we could queue up a series of images here, we've got a, a brief collection uh, and this was taken on flight day six, is, um, is uh, the um, Orion spacecraft approached the moon and the, um, and the Earth is way off in the distance. Uh, you can see uh, eight million people off in the distance and a uh, human capable spacecraft uh, about to circle the moon in the foreground. And uh, this, is, this is one of those remarkable moments and remarkable images that we, uh, we got to share um, on uh, November the 21st. Uh, a little farther along in the mission on, uh, on flight day 13, we got to witness as Orion uh, flew about the distant retrograde orbit, which is the farthest point that a human capable spacecraft has ever flown. We got to see the uh, Earth transit behind the moon extending uh, beyond the pale of human spaceflight, uh, what a human capable spacecraft has done. And then uh, later today, or earlier today, uh, we got to see a, uh, a flyby of the moon um, uh, as part of the return powered flyby and, uh, and witness um, the, uh, the Earth rise <clears throat> for the first time in the Artemis generation. And, and here you see um, the Orion spacecraft um, near, near the point of closest approach. Uh, and then uh, this is the Earth rise uh, that, that we witnessed. Orion's in the foreground, uh, the Earth is in, in, the, uh, in the distant. Um, background and the moon is in the middle there and you see the crescent earth. Um, you know, these are just a few of the remarkable images that, that we've been able to share throughout the course of the mission. Uh, when we are done with this mission, we will have traveled over 1.4 million miles in the course of the 26 day mission and we are on track to do that. Um, we still have a few primary objectives ahead. The mission is going very well. We've accomplished a number of bonus objectives above and beyond what we had planned pre-flight, um, but we still also have some risks ahead of us. We still have yet to accomplish the second half of our priority one objective, which is to demonstrate the spacecraft at lunar reentry conditions, and, as well as uh, our priority three objective, which is to retrieve the spacecraft post splashdown. So with that, I'll pass it back to you, Sandra. Thank you, Mike. Next up, we'll hear from Flight Director Judd Freeling, who was the flight director on console during today's return powered flyby at Bern. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, let's see if we can throw up the uh, the video that Mike showed previously about the pre uh, R uh, RPF video. I'll talk a little bit about that as we were coming into RPF today. Uh, so this is a great shot uh, coming coming in uh, before we we did our RPF uh, maneuver. Uh, you can see uh, kind of there in the, the lower mill there. Uh, we think that's the uh, Copernicus uh, crater there. Uh, that's that's pretty near the Apollo 12 and 14 sites, and uh, we're just stunning video that we what we captured uh, as we were about to to go into LOS uh, for our RPF burn. Uh, so RPF uh, was the largest burn that we've done to date. Uh, it was a little over 962 foot per second burn, lasted three minutes and 27 seconds. That was on the backside of the moon. Uh, we had uh, an, uh, a loss of signal during that uh, time period. Uh, but then uh, as, as we came back uh, AOS uh, at that time, and, and Mike showed that one, that uh, video as well, we saw a really outstanding uh, sh shot of the, the crescent earth and, and it was just, just stunning. Uh, 